Money. G'day team. What I would like to share with you guys is the process I use for long range shooting, and particularly prone shooting, i.e. lying on the ground. Now shooting for me is quite a deliberate and meticulous process. I'm going to step you through step by step, phase by phase of what I uh, do when I practice at the range, what I always try to achieve when I'm out in the field and get set up for those long range shots. Most of what I want to really demonstrate to you guys is about recall management. You may have heard me talk about it uh, on some of my other videos, but recall management for me is about managing the recall on the rifle so that I can send the most accurate shot that me and these two rifles, plus all the reload stuff, can deliver to the target. Hopefully a bullseye, hopefully a hit on the gong, hopefully a dead animal. So let's get into the process. Righty, that's our intro done. Now it's time for us to go to the range. It's not far away, it's not far away at all actually. It's actually just here in my backyard. The reason I'm doing it in my backyard is I can't be bothered going to the range. Plus, the most important thing, everything I'm going to show you can be done in your backyard or in your house on the carpet. So let's get into it. So step one of my technique is body alignment. Trying to get my body straight in line with the rifle so that the recoil comes straight back through my body not off to one side what I need to be able to do is line up straight with the rifle that's step one body alignment so I should be in line with the rifle my body should be in line now next phase is shoulder alignment basically getting these shoulders square to the rifle. If I have them nice and square, that means I'm not going to get turned when the shot's fired. If this is slightly around like this, and that's pulled back like this, generally my legs are around like that supported. So if I'm straight in line, my shoulders are square, that means the recoil will come straight back and meet this platform here. Um, also with our shoulders, we have our weight distributed evenly on each elbow, supporting the rifle while it's up in the shoulder. So that's step two, shoulder alignment. Once we're in line with the rifle, the next thing is to bring it up into the shoulder pocket. The shoulder pocket for me is right between that shoulder muscle and the top of my chest muscle, sort of like in the crease over there. So that's where I put my rifle in my shoulder pocket. Right, now that I've found the shoulder pocket, the next thing to do is to load the bipod. Start off by digging in our bipod legs. I've got bipod spikes, makes it a lot easier. Punch those in like that. If you don't have uh, spikes on your bipod, you can dig, dig or brace your feet off your bipod. So once that dug in, I've got some resistance. I've got the rifle into my shoulder pocket. I can now feel the weight there. The first sort of method I use for loading the bipod once the leg's dug in is to just raise up on my chest and sort of just lean forward. You can feel, I can feel the rifle flexing. All right, or dig my feet in. And just kind of lean forward into the... So, without the bag, the rifle should just sit there like that. Step five, rear stock support. I use this shooting bag here and go straight into here provides a awesome support for the rear of the rifle now guys can use rolled up jackets put that under there some guys like to use their hand like that which all works well as long as it provides a steady platform to you so that's the rear stock support step six level the rifle now if you've got a fancy bipod like me with a pod lock on it like so, and it swivels, then it's going to make it a lot easier. I've got a camp bubble on here, and so what I do is unlock the pod lock on the bipod. Then the tricky bit with this is here's the tricky bit is to 
keep an eye on the target and focus on the bubble and the target left and right eye that's level reach forward lock lock the pod lock and that's hopefully the rifle nice and level to provide a nice level shot at long range step seven applying pressure with this hand to the pistol grip or stock so I as part of my recall management will use these three fingers here to apply pressure on the stock and pulling back I do that so that once again by promoting the the path of recall everything's coming back um, so if these three fingers are pulling straight back I'm leaning forward hopefully the rifle's only going to go one way straight back that way not torqued off to left and right so three fingers applying pressure pulling back I ride my thumb up here and have my finger finger sitting out like this I keep the thumb and finger out here primarily to keep it stress free for one task only and that's for pulling the trigger what I don't do is I don't wrap that thumb around there or on the 308 as well on a conventional sporting stock wrap it around there because I find it tends to make you want to talk and grab grab the stock like so and it increases your grip pressure instead of promoting a pullback I have a sense of feeling that I'm grabbing it and trying to choke the chicken so fingers back here pulling it back into your into your shoulder while leaning forward promotes good recall path everything in place now the next part of it is to form a good cheek weld that onto there forming a good cheek weld they talk a lot about um, establishing your natural point of aim your natural point of aim is basically when you put your cheek onto the rifle acquire your target you form a perfect sight picture i.e. the crosshair is perfectly formed you should be able to while it's in place close your eye open them up and maintain that same sight picture if it's changed then perhaps you've got some issues in here with your cheek belt and where your face sits on your cheek on your stock step nine breathing cycle you may have heard people talk about breathing when it comes to shooting as a natural respiratory pause um, that's a pretty fancy term for finding the right place in your breathing when to place your shot when to set the trigger off for me it is um, I take a series of breaths in and out and I try to I always try to fire as I've just about let let most of my breath out so I'll try and demonstrate that for you That's our shot away, hopefully, a bullseye, a gong smashed at a thousand meters, or an animal dead at the other end, and I'm heading off for recovery. One thing you may have noticed is I shoot with both eyes open. Now it's a skill technique that was taught to me in the military, and it's about um, in a combat sort of situation, trying to you know, have both eyes open so you can see everything moving. Um, in sort of precision shooting, it's about um, managing your eye fatigue, because if you can imagine um, if we were waiting for a deer to turn or a target to appear and we had that, you know, that's my um, closed eye, this is my shooting eye. If I had that closed the whole time, what actually happens, and you should try this, is keep that close and see how long it takes before that eye starts to get tired or starts to water. So I shoot with both eyes open to um, overcome eye fatigue, particularly if I'm going to stay on scope for a, for a hell of a long time waiting for the target to present itself for a bloody good shot. So, shooting by its eyes open. It's tricky to uh, learn, but you should give it a go. Trigger finger. What I do with these three fingers is pull back here to manage my recall. My trigger finger wants to join those other three. All right. So that helps, it keeps the recall pass coming back this way by pulling the trigger, following the trigger right through to the rear. That way, like that. All right. If you have a tendency to flick off, that can be a little, you know, imperfection in your shooting and may throw around at longer range but it says little things at um, longer extended range 
they all matter, you know, like the cant and the rifle and so forth. So I'll just show you on the 308, same process. So a couple of key differences between the 308 and my uh, 300 Wisdom is the stock configuration. Now the 300 Wisdom has got a KRG X-ray stock with it with a straight pull uh, grip pistol grip in it. So it's straight up and down like that. Right, for these conventional type hunting rifles, they're slightly angled like this. So it's the same thing for when applying um, pressure with these three fingers, same process applies. Nice and square, those fingers pulling straight back. I ride the thumb here, like I said before. If that bad boy goes over here, all he wants to do is choke the chicken and talk that grip, you know. Um, so, rear pressure there, coming back here like this. The thumb just sitting there, same thing, same process. Round down rage, dead deer, dead pig, dead tug. So, in summary, the 10 steps are Body alignment, try and get your body nice and square and you're lying down so the recoil comes straight back through the rifle. Right, step two is getting your shoulders nice and square. Nice square platform so it doesn't twist you. Step three, find the shoulder pocket, your shoulder pocket, mine's right there. Step four, load the bipod, put some weight forward to load against the recoil. Step five, then goes your rear support. Step six, level off. The rifle. If you've got a fancy podlock, that's all good. If not, adjust it with the feet. Step seven, grip pressure. Those three fingers here, pulling straight back against your load as well. That helps promote the recoil path coming this way. Step eight, forming a good cheek weld. Step nine, we're getting close to the shot, is breathing. Take the breath in. As you expire and let your breath right, just about right out, that's when I squeeze off my round. Right, trigger control. When you're ready to fire, finger goes on there. These fingers are nice and stress-free. The trigger comes straight back through, follow through. So those are my 10 steps that I use for being a better shot, getting better shots on target. Um, and I try and replicate that all in the field. Hope you got something out of that. Like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. So, back. when did I say something? The camera. That happens. Yeah. So, my recall management is all about that. Pocket. Oh.